The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX. Now, something must have happened in Germany last night for the market to gap up that much. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Well, it went right up to that ABCD, and so far it stopped right there. It hasn't accelerated any more than what we've already seen. Of course, the news is a uh, fact coming out of uh, Buenos Aires that it looks like the tariffs are going to be put in abeyance here for a bit, at least for three months, and then we'll see what's happening. Folks, we've been looking at this bottom here for several weeks uh, here in the stock market, and one of the things that we talked about last week and the week before was the fact that that emerging market index was looking extremely positive, as was the Shanghai uh, composite and also the Hang Seng, which has uh, been very, very powerful. Let's take a look, look here at the Hang Seng because we have some of our friends here in uh, Hong Kong that are able to uh, take advantage of this. I just wanted to show you uh, what's happened here in the Hang Seng. As we look at the chart that we posted on Friday in the newsletter, uh, we gapped up above that high. Uh, the 61% retracement, that was at 27,000. We got to 27,300. That was at the 78% level of that move. We closed pretty close to that level. Now, you'll notice the island reversal that we had down there on that October 28th level. That was at the same time we were making that three drive to a bottom pattern. If you recall, that was the focus of uh, all the FANG stocks, the, Dow, uh, the composite, and also, uh, you know, several of the major stock indices like the um, uh, S&P and then also the um, IWM. Anyway, this is why we're having this strong rally. This, it is my opinion that this is a rally in a bear market, and we are leaving a 30. Well, we haven't left it yet, but we will probably at the close. Uh, we have we have a 30 point gap today in the S&P from where we were Friday night. Gapping up Sunday night and where we are right now. That's a that gap will most probably be filled. The question is whether it'll be in my lifetime or not. We'll see what's going on. Yes, Buenos Aires is a beautiful city, uh, Maria. I've been there, and it's just like being in Italy. Oh my gosh, it's just uh, the architecture and the restaurants and everything. It was really, uh, really, really great. I was back there. In, uh, in I was there in 1988, and then from there I went over to uh, Montevideo, uh, Uruguay, and, uh, and, and and saw that, and it was it was a very interesting part of the world. Trouble is, it takes uh, 14 and a half hours to get there, which is not a whole lot of fun. Now, last night I just wanted to show you this gap that we had. I, I know you guys know this, but let's just walk through it a little bit because technically it means quite a bit. Uh, you'll notice that we did uh, we closed at around 25,000 and change, 25,200. And we got up to 26,066 last night. I, I think that was pretty close to the high. Um, and you, know, you can see the ABCD structure on this will take it up to that level. But we've left a, you know, a 400-point gap in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And, you know, <laughs> there's no gaps in the Dow Jones. So that thing's going to be filled. The $64 question is, when it is going to be filled. Now, this morning we have a special uh, treat for everybody. Uh, two things. A, I'm going to give everybody the day off on Wednesday for the first time in 220 years. We're going to close the stock market for the funeral of uh, one of our presidents, Herbert Walker Bush. George Herbert Walker Bush, which will be on Wednesday. The markets will all be closed. Uh, the rest of the world will not be celebrating it, of course, so the markets will be open in the uh, trading for the uh, the e-mini markets, of course, in the Globex. And then also today, the big surprise is we're going to have Bill Meridian on as our guest at the half hour. Bill's going to talk to us about some of the things that he's looking at. Now, with the news announcement that comes out, folks, these are 
as you can imagine, extremely emotional. We've been, we talked about this last week, that all it took was a little bit of a Chinese uh, tariff, uh, uh, you know, a deal of some kind, and the market was really poised to go higher. Folks, it wouldn't go down no matter what happened. We only had a 20% correction. That's the first time we've had one of those in a long time, and it stopped at a beautiful ABCD3 drive to a bottom pattern. I mean, that's what technical analysis is all about. I, I don't know the fundamentals of this, but a lot of other people don't know either. But the emotionalism that we're seeing here is what's really exciting. You know, we're getting to see some things that uh, we haven't seen very often, particularly in gold. You know, we're right up to this 1233 level now here in the Christmas gold here again. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if it pops through there or not. I wanted to uh, mention a little bit about the euro because the euro was really exciting last night. I wanted to... Uh, just to show you what happened last night, I was sending these videos out last night because of the excitement that was going on. You notice that we made this uh, on the opening. We gapped up uh, uh, 50 pips right at the 61% retracement uh, in the euro. And from that level, you know, it had a, uh, a really round robin ride. You'll be able to see it here on the next chart. After we made that 61% retracement level, it came down to guess where? The 61% retracement there at 11.13.27. And from there, we went up to the exact 78% levels at 113.80. And from there, we came all the way back down to 113.20. So uh, even though there's craziness going on in the world of the stocks, the foreign exchange markets are acting just about as expected. They really are. They're just spot on what they're supposed to be doing. Take a look at the... Uh, just take a look at the Canadian dollar from, from last week that we were posting when we were, had that three drive to a top pattern that was basically a double bottom up, double top up there at that 133 level. You can see what happened with that one. Now, it's, it has held that 131.50 so far this morning. So that's going to be something that you watch very, very closely. Now, if you think that there's a lot of volatility going on in the stock market, I want you to take a look at one that we've been watching here. And this is just the last three days. And we've been showing you day after day the volatility that you get in the natural gas. But look at natural gas. Last night, it gapped down uh, just a little over $2,500, made a rally up to the 382 retracement, and then dropped another $2,500. So you can see from where we were on Friday to where we are right now, we dropped well over uh, $4,000 in the natural gas contact. Boy, that, that's a lot. That's 80 S&P points, folks. You know, that's a, that's a big move. So if you're trading natural gas, it's a very, very... Uh, active uh, contract, uh, you get pretty good fill. You get very good fills, and it follows the sequence of the numbers of the Fibonacci summation sequence extremely well. So, that's something that I think that uh, it's worthy of. You. If you're an experienced trader, you want to take a look at the natural gas. If you're a neophyte trader, you know pay attention to other things like corn and other things. And that's another thing is that we've had a big move here in the grains overnight because of this uh, tariff thing, which helps us quite a bit because we were along that complex. Anyway, let's take a little break here, folks. 877-927-6648 if you have any questions. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Right, folks we're back and we're going to take a look here at bitcoin we've had several people uh, over the weekend ask about bitcoin because we broke below the four thousand dollar a share level if you remember we've been talking about the big abcd pattern that came in at thirty eight hundred dollars a share uh, during the move down there were some trades supposedly between uh, thirty two fifty and thirty six hundred in the Bitcoin, but these are different exchanges, so you don't know. The ones that we're seeing as reported from Bitstamp looks like the low is down around uh, $3,600 to $3,700 per share. Now, uh, this is not really about cryptocurrencies. It's probably about blockchain, which is the newest form of uh, what they call distributed, distributed ledger technology that is supposed to be used to help uh, get us away from a, uh, a cash society to a cashless society, and that is most probably coming. Whether it'll be very, very soon or not, my guess it probably will be because the technical things that are happening in the market are happening so quickly that uh, it'll probably happen within the uh, next few years. We're seeing it just about everywhere. Uh, you know, here in Tucson, even everybody that goes in to buy anything from McDonald's or Starbucks, they just put up their their little Apple phone or iPhone or whatever it is and put it up and that's it. So we'll see uh, see what's going on. We want to take a quick look here uh, at the uh, the banking index because that's one that's been uh, telling us that we were probably at a major bottom down here. You'll see here. Uh, as we made that 78% level back there on the um, 26th and 27th of October, and you remember we were looking at that just a little while ago when the Hang Seng was doing the same thing. There were some major cycles occurring at that time, and now you'll see that there's an ABCD structure coming in up at the 61% retracement at 107. We close at 101.57, and I imagine we're going to see a pretty substantial gap up today on gaps like we have today folks uh this is this is going it shakes everybody up because it's supposed to be a uh, change in economic thought which in fact i don't believe that is what's occurring at all it's just the fact that they made some type of a interim agreement is really all it's about 
But, you know, again, they don't check with me on those things, and I'm just a technician. I'm just looking at what's happened. When I was looking at that bottom down there, you know, everybody thought this thing was going to have a much bigger correction. And with that three-drive pattern that we were seeing in the NASDAQ, along with, you know, watching it in the uh, – uh, all of the FANG stocks doing exactly the same thing. The only one of the FANG stocks that was not making this three drive to a bottom pattern that we're looking at here in the NASDAQ was Google, and that was making, you know, a double bottom. So this is the rally. Uh, you'll notice here on the NASDAQ. Now, I did, I did all these charts Saturday morning, so I had no idea what was going on. Uh, until you know late Sunday afternoon, and I had already sent the uh, the letter out by then, uh, or all the charts out. I had uh, I had not done the commentary yet, but once the commentary came in, you know I expected to see something, you know really really big happening. And we've we've gone up to that level. Uh, in fact, we hit 7,500, I believe, already uh, in that NASDAQ. So that's right at that level. So we're, we'll see. I'm pretty sure it's going to go through it because of that big gap. But, you know, we'll need to uh, let the market tell us that, that, that it's going to do that. As far as the S&P, uh, you know, as the, the action that we had, you know, on Friday was basically saying that uh, it looked like it had an ABCD structure up there at around the 2838 level. And, uh, you know, last night with the gap, you can see here on the next chart, um, the gap that we had last night. This does not have the gap in it, by the way, because I had done this before the market, uh, before the market opened uh, Sunday night. And we opened at uh, 27. Uh, 86, I believe, up about 25 to 30 points, and then we really immediately ran up to uh, 28.18 was our uh, high uh, overnight, and that was very similar to where we were back on November 7th. But this time we have this huge gap that's in here, and as as we all know, these gaps will be filled. The question is, will they be filled uh, in our lifetime or not? That. That's the $64 question. So we'll be watching it. The main thing to look at here, uh, David's asking, how secure is blockchain technology? You know, David, I know nothing about it. All I know is one of the smartest folks I deal with is John Jameson out of the UK. That boy has been involved with uh, the original part of the Internet, you know, going back to the early uh, mid-1980s. And uh, when he was uh, in college, that's how he started all this stuff. And he says that the blockchain technology is going to be the Internet squared, where we get away from the uh, cashless society and the governments lose control of their money, which means the U.S. dollar will not be uh, king of the hill anymore. But whether that happens, you know, those are things that uh, belong to a different uh, forum than what we have here at TFNN. Here we're trying to make a few bucks. Now, the good part about this thing, Thing that happened in China, of course, is that we had this giant move here in the grains uh, overnight. We had a big move in corn going up to our objective. We've been waiting that, for that March corn to reach that uh, really uh, important objective that uh, we were looking at. And I'll post the, uh, you'll see soybeans here left this monster gap. Uh, and uh, I believe these gaps will be filled also. But this is all related to the emotionalism uh, of the market, and believe me, it is emotional. As you can see, some of the things that have happened. And if you watched a little bit of uh, Bloomberg or even CNBC earlier this morning, you'll see that there was quite a bit of this happening. Now, the Europe, every, every market in the world was up, folks. All of Asia gapped up higher. The Hang Seng was up uh, 3%. The Shanghai was up 3%. The DAX was up. The FTSE was up. I don't think there was a stock market across the world that was down. In fact, the only thing that I could find that was down was natural gas. And that gap down, you know, 20, almost $3,000 and then went down another $2,500 afterwards. So there's something going on in the natural gas, even though we have this tremendously cold weather coming in to the North Sea, it's not affected the natural gas too much. We've said in the newsletter that we thought that the crude oil was at a major bottom in here. We gapped up $2 a, a barrel, and we've held that level relatively well through the night. So we'll see what kind of a, a rally that we get. But remember, this is a day of high emotionalism. So if you're in there, make sure that you, you know, uh, 
count all your BBs before you put a trade on because uh, there's going to be some wild swings and protect yourself at all times. Because if you don't, and if you don't, that means you're going to have some problems because if you don't use a stop, you're telling the market that you know more than the market does, and that's not a good thing to be looking at. Here is the uh, – I will end the show here with because we got Bill Meridian coming on up next. Uh, Okay, Bill's asking if there's no new tariffs in three. What they're doing, Bill, is they're giving themselves time to try to work something out for three months, but even that is could be up in the air. So, you know, I don't know. You, you'll notice here on the crude oil, we made a 78% level going back to last June. Uh, so that's an important one to uh, pay attention. Stay tuned for Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. Vienna, Austria will be with us at the break. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Bill Meridian of Psychos Research. Bill, are you there? Hi, Larry. How are you? Bill, we have a question from one of our listeners already. Yep. I, it's about this uh, thing in Saudi Arabia about the Washington Post uh, gentleman, Khashoggi. Do you have any comments of what do you think is going on there or what will happen? Well, I'll tell you what. The, Saudi Arabia is going to be a major event in 2020. 
uh, right now, I don't I don't have any more information than what uh, you've seen in the news. I didn't get mm -hmm. anything from the people I speak to down there who know anything different. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fair enough. All right, what would you like to talk about today, my friend? Any feeling on the markets? A little volatility here? <laughs> yeah, well, if you go go to number two, uh, I, I sent you the um, sure PowerPoint. You betcha. I'm on page two right now. I think I put it up there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, stocks, the December rally has begun. And uh, we'll look at the uh, the other things as we as we proceed. But uh, let's just go forward to slide three. You betcha. I'll be right there, yeah. and then we'll be. Hold on a second. It says there. Why, why it is tough to make money. <laughs> and if you look at this histogram, it goes back to 1900, and it shows the share of asset classes that have posted negative total returns for the year. And right now we're at a high. So in other mm -hmm. words, if you put a dollar in each of the asset classes, I guess real estate is probably the only one that's up for the year. Stocks are flat. I think bonds are down. Mm -hmm. I know art is down. But um, <clears throat> that's why it's so tough. And let me just add in that this uh, notion, I just saw uh, who's up in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, oh, the very – the largest hedge fund in the world, which is up in Connecticut. And I'm trying it's to hear just BlackRock. No, it's the largest hedge fund in the world up in Connecticut. It's uh, Ray Dalio. Bridgewater. Oh, Ray Dalio. Yeah, yeah Bridgewater. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he comes on. And he's got it right. I mean, you know, why are they successful? He says, well, there are credit cycles. And he says, we're getting late in the credit cycle. I think we have two years to go. That's exactly, you know, what I think. 2020 mm -hmm. is going to be a top. One of the indications that the because what happens now, what young people don't understand is since uh, Jimmy Carter signed the Monetary Control Act, June 1980, the Fed can monetize anything. So they can create an unlimited amount of credit, which means anybody can buy anything. And so, mm -hmm. you know, what they buy is a matter of psychology. It was oil and gold, you know, 2000, mm -hmm. 2010. It's been stocks since 2009. And uh, one professor did a study and he said, well, there's not much history to go on, but as far as I can see, when these manias start, a certain number of asset classes get caught up. And in the early stages, let's just say it's six major asset classes, then it's five, then it's four, then it's three. And uh, when they don't all go up together, it's a sign that it's ending. Well, take a look at this graph and you, you could make a case for it ending right now. I don't think that's mm -hmm. the case. I think we have one more year to go. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a very interesting graph that I just picked up this weekend. And if we go to the next slide, this is confirmation of a stronger economy. So that tells me the economy is not going to slow down now or next year. Because I mean, this, they're usually this, wrong, correct? <laughs> well, it was Paul McRae Montgomery that did a study of 3,200 covers of Time magazine, and he found out that 80% of the time, when there was a, an investment-related story on the cover, 80% of the time, the price – implication on the cover went in the reverse direction within about three months. Mm -hmm. So that's an indication that the economy is still growing. I just came back from the U.S. Anybody I met in the building trade is so busy that they're, they're looking to hire more people. And there were help wanted signs and job fair signs, particularly from FedEx in northern New Jersey, and there were help wanted signs in New York mm -hmm. and Connecticut. And uh, I only made it once to Pennsylvania. But as far as I can see, everybody I'm talking to is quite busy. So now mm -hmm. where's the stock market going? Let's look at the next slide. Now, this is monthly S&P. Okay. Now, both the weekly and the monthly cycles declined in October. And I thought it was going to be a two-week decline like it was in February. And I was wrong about the magnitude and the duration. It lasted four weeks. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the magnitude is much worse. In other words, I should have followed the cycle. So now that, I'm, uh, now that I've been uh, slapped around by the cycle, uh, here's the monthly cycle bottoming and going higher, as you can see. So mm -hmm. let's go to the weekly, and there's the weekly cycle bottoming. And I think it already bottomed. I think the, uh, you know, the average low in any year is, I think it's October 27 or 28. And I had... Um, I think the low I had I had projected a low on October 29 using the turning point method and the actual low was I think on the uh, 28th if that was like 27 28 29 so you can't go too wrong buying the October low so if you go to the next slide is there any confirmation of this well yeah here's the 10 day moving average of the advances less declines 
and you can see there are higher lows and it's not overbought. It might be overbought in about two or three mm. days. It keeps going the way it's going. Mm. And one of the other cycles I rely on, maybe a little too heavily this time, the cycles that I showed earlier are created from the very latest data. So in other words, it's absolutely guaranteed that as of, as of the Friday close, those are accurate cycles. If it's, it should, with some likelihood, follow the, the indicated direction in the coming time periods, but there's no guarantee of that. This next slide, which is uh, number eight. Okay. This well, is the got, combination. Yeah. Got wonderful work, Bill, and this is really beautiful stuff. Sorry, go ahead. Well, this is the one, the four, and the 10 year cycles added together for Q4. And as you can see, it did not show a sharp decline in October. Now, just remember, these cycles are what I would call static. In other words, they don't change that much. In 10 years, if we looked at them again, or 10 years ago, they may be slightly different. The cycles that I showed earlier, the weekly and the monthly, they are dynamic in that I, they, they are computed, and I can recompute them right now. I can do them daily, weekly, monthly. I can compute them for last week, this week. But this is the one-year cycle, which is the annual seasonal cycle in any year, added mm -hmm. to the four-year presidential cycle, added to the 10-year decennial cycle that was uh, determined way back in the 30s by um, – Ameritrust Bank. And of mm -hmm. course, the four-year cycle, the odd thing is they say the Federal Reserve props the president up, and that's why you get this cycle. But the four-year cycle was evident in the data prior to the establishment of the Fed in 1913. It is existent in countries where they have a four-year election cycle, a six-year cycle, an eight-year cycle, or no elections at all. In other words, there's a four-year cycle. We don't know why. Mm -hmm. Bill, I have so, a question someone's asking yes. here, and that is when you say you compute these cycles, what kind of program do you use to do the computation of these cycles? Well, the first cycles I've shown come from my program, which is called JSTOCS, because the Austrian programmers are programming in Java, and so mm -hmm. they named it JSTOCS. Okay. And Fair uh, enough. This, this particular slide comes from Sergey Tarasov's Timing Solutions. Okay. Fair enough. And Thank you. So if we, we want to take it now, we want to take a closer look. Now we've taken like a, a, a long range view. Let's take a shorter range view in the next slide, which is number nine. Oh, and that's, number nine. That's, okay. Let me get number nine up here. I put up number 10. Hold on one second, my friend. Okay. Ready to go. Number nine. Now that is the average price behavior in the, in the month of any December and the blue Histogram oh, Bill, see that. Bill yeah. we have to pay a few bills. Could you stay oh, yeah. with us and no, discuss chart money. nine? All right, we'll pay, pay a few bills. 877-927-6648, folks. We'll be right back with Bill Meridian. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of 
commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. Bill, we're looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average behavior in December. You want to discuss... Yes. Go ahead. Sorry, my friend. Yeah, the the top <clears throat> the top histogram that you see, the blue bars, are the average expected return. In other words, it's the odds that the market is going up or down that day multiplied by the amount that they usually move. So the ones that are below zero are your down days. The uh, ones that you can see the strongest time of the year is the Christmas rally, the 26th through the end of the month, and the line below that is uh, $100 invested according to that histogram would behave as you see. So you can see there's an average tendency to top around the uh, end of the first week and then to decline to the middle of the month and then to rally. Let me summarize that for you on the next page. You get a very clear picture. Okay. So years ago, uh, as we remember, our old friend Art Merrill wrote Behavior of Prices on Wall Street and he isolated the end of the month uh, seasonality, like the last two days is the last four days of the month and the first two days of the next month. But Arthur, who was a friend of mine, took the mean or the average month. He lumped them all together. I broke them out, December, January versus uh, December, January versus January, February. As, you know, I took them individually by month. The period from November 30th through December 6th has been up 66% of the time. It's a reasonably strong, it's actually not one of the stronger um, periods. Uh, the period from the 6th through the 15th, this is not end of the month, it has traditionally been corrective, and it is the single weakest time of the year to hold semiconductor stocks. So if you look at the short something, the 6th through the 15th in any December, semiconductor stocks are the best bet. I don't know why. And that's followed by the strongest and the longest EOM is end of month, period. It, it's December 15th through the 6th of January. That's 21 days. Mm -hmm. That is the longest and the strongest. It's been up 79.8% of the time for an average gain of 2.3%. This is the easiest money you're going to see. It gets mm -hmm. easier if you have a Sun-Mercury conjunction in the sign of Capricorn in the first week of uh, January or the last week of December. Then that 79.8 uh, goes up to 89. Do we have and, that this uh, year? No. Okay. No, you have them about once every two years or so, but not this year. So that's what I call the easy money. You can at least buy the SSL, which goes up twice as much as the uh, S&P, of course. Mm -hmm. So that's breaking December down. And what I do is I then project turning points, which I learned from George Lindsay. And probably if anybody wants a guide to that, your best teacher is uh, Bob Miner over at Dynamic Trading is the guru there. And uh, these are time periods projected from previous highs and lows. And now, if you do that, I have a time. I have a, a high projected for the seventh. And where does this 
where does this end of the month strength end for December, but on the 6th? So what does that tell you? That at the end of this week, if you have any leveraged long positions, you should probably close them out. Maybe by Wednesday if you have a big gain or Thursday at the latest. I think Thursday might be a down day. So that's well, stock. So let's move on to bonds. We're going to be closed on Wednesday, you know. Uh, oh, that's for the, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah we have that. a – yep. Okay, we go to the next one. Yeah, bonds monthly cycle. As you can see, the monthly cycle points up. So does the weekly one. And – now this is chart. Down. This is chart uh, thirteen. This is eleven. Okay, hold on. Let's get it up here. Sorry, my friend. There we go. You give us some great information, my friend. Okay. So this is the average tendency for bonds. I I still think bonds are in a bear market longer term, but short term they're rising. So let's go down now to number twelve. Okay. Now the next the next two charts describe the likely. We're focusing only on December. Note there's a week period from the 16th to the 26th. Notes have fallen 80% of the time in this period in the la over the last 36 years. How do you miss things like that? Or how do don't big banks see this? <laughs> and we're going to move. We're going to move from this static cycle to the dynamic cycle. So let's go down one. And I should have drawn an arrow in here, but you can see it. I mean, look at the uh, the second strip where you have that steep decline. Mm -hmm. That's an 80% probability of a decline, beginning on the 19th. This is what I call a static cycle. It doesn't change much. Let's go down one and see the dynamic cycle. Now, now is this dip, chart number 14? This is now 14. Look okay, where it good. tops. It tops on the 18th, one day before the 19th, and it declines into the 26th. So here you have okay. a confirmation. So the odds have to be slightly in excess of 80%. Now, what do you want to see? You know, Larry, you've been a trader. What do you want to see before that? Well, you want to see bonds rally. You mm -hmm. want to see bonds rally, and you look for it to get a bit frothy and overbought, and then you look for sentiment, very short-term sentiment, to become too bullish, and then you have confirmation of this decline. Okay. So this is cycles research. It's static cycles and dynamic cycles. and um, Well, we'll, we'll get uh, – gold is a good example. That's when, That one is next. This is a good okay. example. The weekly and the monthly cycles are not synchronized. The weekly cycle falls while the monthly cycle points up. Mm -hmm. The seasonal annual cycle is constructive through December. The net result is likely to be a trading range. Actually, that I don't think it's 1,200 to 12. I think it's sort of 1,235. I clipped this from an old report. I think it's between sort of 1,225 and 1,250. It's in a trading range. The mm -hmm. cycles... If they are not, if they're out of phase, they usually suggest a trading range. Well, Larry, you've been a trader. If you know it, if you have some assurance it's a trading range, you know it's not going to go straight up. You know it's not going to go straight down. So you'd mm -hmm. probably rely on very short-term oscillators like a stochastic to do your short-term trading. Mm -hmm. So wow. we have two clear examples with the cycles in stocks and bonds and one unclear one in gold, which leads to the conclusion there's a trading range in gold. And what the stocks and bonds have in common, they're both paper assets. So there's, for some reason, a mania in paper assets for this month. Wow. This next chart, number 16, about the USA in 2019. Yeah. Can we cover that one, Bill? Sure. Um, okay. Well, first of all, Donald Trump, who was born at 953, I keep telling people, I've got a PDF if anybody out there wants to read my justification of that. You send an email to Bill at cyclesresearch.com and just put Trump BT for birth time in the header so I'll know what you want and I'll send it to you. And I hope that settles the question. Um, his horoscope using the 9.53 a.m. time is extremely well aspected through March. So I doubt he may have a difficult opening in January to the year, but I think he's safe and sound right through March. No, I don't think he's going to be impeached uh, this year or next year. And then there's a January solar eclipse opposite the USA sun. And here's a list of the past eclipses, 1935, 54, 73, 92, 2011. And the reason you put one with the other is because the sun in the horoscope is the leader, the national will of the people. The sun, as everyone knows, in the USA horoscope is square Saturn. And Saturn's in Libra, and Libra is the scales of justice. And as Dane Rudyard pointed out a million years ago, this is the sign of very strong constitutional government that we have, or we should have a constitutional republic. We don't mm -hmm. at the moment. 
But anyway, I believe that that eclipse is symbolic of challenges to the constitutional government from radical members of the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, they'll go after gun control, they want to reinstore, uh, reinstall Obamacare, and push many unconstitutional things. So therefore, because Trump's horoscope is so well aspected, uh, he is probably not going to be that highly affected, but the country will. Good. That's good to hear. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us, my friend. We really appreciate it, Bill. Okay. We have no more time. You're the best. Uh, We have, have, can you stay with us? We've got to pay a few bills. We'll be right back in two minutes. Stay with us, please. Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter with a focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, which would you like to cover next? The Eclipse Path? 17. 17? You betcha. One second, I'll have it. Someone asked a question. Is the Danube uh, River still experiencing low tide? I don't you know. know. Okay, I didn't either. <laughs> okay, here we go. Page uh, number 17, fire away. Yeah, well, of, of those two previous eclipses that opposed the USA sun, 54 and 73 were both tied in to China, to China-American mm-hmm. relations. And uh, the Sino-American Mutual Defense Treaty was signed between United States Republic of China. That was 54. Then Nixon removed the troops, 73. Nixon's visit to mainland China. Now let's look at the path. That is number 18. 
Okay. Uh, 18, it runs right through China and it ends sort of just off the coast of Alaska. Mm -hmm. So you have two indications that Chinese and American relations will be important next year. And if we go down to 19, um, there is a chapter in my book, uh, Mastering Geopolitical Prediction, in which I discuss horoscopes of diplomatic relations. China and the U.S. first established diplomatic relations 616-1844, one day after the partial eclipse of June 15, 1844. Shortly mm -hmm. afterward, they signed a treaty on July 3rd. Its title was Treaty of Peace, Amity, and Commerce. Both the January and the July solar eclipses in 2019 are hitting these charts. So what does this tell us? It tells us that the U.S.-China story is not going to fade away, and we're probably going to be reading about uh, the two countries duking it out over trade and tariffs between now and I would say probably next autumn before that story mm -hmm. fades away. And it's probably okay. going to get quite testy uh, you know, at certain points. And if you just go one more slide down, that is mm -hmm. the book, Mastering Geopolitical Prediction. Mm -hmm. And if you go one more down, uh, that's uh, the different products, cycles, research, early okay. warning, forecast, and the book. Books. Hey, thanks. Thanks so, for joining sure. us, my friend. You Anytime, bet. Anytime, Larry. Talk. Thank you, Bill. Bill Meridian, Bye -bye. Cycles Research. Bye bye. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!